Greetings and welcome to the Spring Sub Kamil Bible Study. In this session, we will consider a brief introduction to the Pentateuch. The first five books of the Bible are called Pentateuch, a Greek word for five books. Literally, Greek Pentateuchos means five containers. These five books, namely Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, are very important books in the Bible. In fact, they serve as an introduction to the entire Bible. They are the historical and theological foundation for all other books of the Bible. It is essential to examine the basic theology in these books to understand the status and mission of Jesus, the promised Messiah. In Hebrew, these five books are called Torah, meaning the law or teaching, or sometimes referred to as the law of Moses. For centuries, both Jews and Christians believed that Moses was the author of the book of Torah. Modern scholars do not consider Moses as the direct author. The exact formation of these books is buried in history. A few indication, both from internal as well as external sources, suggest that Moses was not the actual writer of these books. For example, Moses' death is mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 34. Secondly, various phrases suggest that the author lived much later than the actual events described. For example, the phrase, until this time, which appears several times. One such example is found in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 6, where, referring to the burial of Moses, the author writes, that the burial place of Moses was not known even up to his time. Many scholars are in agreement that the final editions or the form we now have of the Pentateuch was completed during the time of exile in Babylon 550 BC. One must accept, however, that the basic narrative in these books originates from Moses. In the Bible itself, the first five books are referred to simply as Moses or as the Book of Moses or Law of Moses. For example, you may read John's Gospel, chapter 5, 46 to 47. Let us consider what are the sources of Pentateuch. Moses as the lawgiver is the indirect author of the Pentateuch. The traditions that are collected in the Pentateuch go back to Moses. There is sometimes called a movement to backward in the formation of the tradition contained in the Bible. Final renditions were completed about the time of the Babylonian exile. At the time, the exiles reflected on how God had liberated his people from Egypt. They also saw how God was active in the lives of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They remembered that the one God had committed himself to them. Those reflections underpinned their understanding of that same God who created the heavens and the earth and humankind. This basic revelation formed the first part of the Bible called Torah or Pentateuch. All these truths were first held in the oral traditions which predate the written text. Biblical scholars agree that several traditions that contributed to the formation of the Pentateuch. Primarily, they point out to four traditions or sources that formed the Pentateuch. These four traditions are known as Yahwist, Second Elohist, Third Priestly, and Fourth Deuteronomic traditions. Each of these traditions bring to the Pentateuch its own characteristics, its own theological viewpoint, the rich variety of interpretations 
that the sensitive reader will take pains to appreciate. A nominal difference between two of these sources is responsible for their names. The Yahwehist source refers to the name Yahweh by which God revealed himself to Israel. The Eloistic prefers the generic name for God, Elohim. The Yahwehist is concrete, imaginative, using many anthropomorphism in its theological approach as seen example in the narrative of creation in Genesis chapter 2 compared with the priestly version in Genesis chapter 1. The Eloistic version is more sober, moralistic. The priestly strand which emphasizes genealogies is strongly theological in tone. The Deuteronomic approach is characterized by the intense oratorial style of Deuteronomic chapter 5 to 11 and by certain principles from which it works such as the centralization of worship in the Jerusalem temple. In our everyday reading of the Pentateuch, we need not be concerned about which traditions influence the text. Ultimately, God is the author who inspired the sacred writers to consolidate all traditions into one narrative. In our study of the Old Testament, we see how God was shaping the history of humanity and how everything that happened in the Old Testament was in preparation for God's salvation through Jesus Christ. The Pentateuch narrates the origin of human person, their creation, purpose and their destiny of love and care of by God for his creation. The Pentateuch serves as the foundation of our faith and each one of these books reveals God's love and purpose in creating humanity. A brief synopsis of these five books follows. God created this world with his power and took a special care in creating humanity who he created in his own image and likeness. The first two humans named Adam and Eve failed to obey God and fell from his grace. In order to remedy the fall of humanity, God initiated a nation from one man who believed God's communication to him and obeyed him. In his walk with God in faith, Abraham became the founder and father of a chosen people who would be instrumental in God's plan of salvation to all nations. Thus Abraham is spoken of as a light to all nations. God never abandoned his chosen people and his love from them is evident in the Exodus saga in which after consolidating them into a distinct people by trials and suffering, he freed them from the bondage of Egyptian slavery. God chose and formed Moses to lead them out of Egypt to the land he had promised to Abraham to give to his posterity. The trials and uncertainties of the Exodus saga disciplined the people to truth in God's power and providence and they accepted the covenant that God offered them through Moses. The covenant required them to obey God's law and in return God would give them peace and permanent possession of the land. The above is a brief outline of God's revelation in the Pentateuch. These events are historical but one must not approach biblical history without realizing that the biblical authors did not envisage writing a history textbook to exactly record political, social or economic scenarios of the past. Rather, the writers were concerned with recording God's unfolding plan of salvation throughout human history. In fact, the entire Bible is historical in the sense that they are stories of the past 
Hence the terms we use for these narratives are salvation history or biblical history. There are two features in the biblical history. One, history seen theologically. Second, theology seen historically. What do I mean by history seen theologically? The events recorded in the Bible occurred in history and are true. But the focus of the author was not to give a detailed record of past events, but rather to show how God was active from the beginning in the lives of people. Hence, the author of the Bible sees God's and guiding the events that affect humanity. God is seen as the one who leads the people throughout their history. War, famine and exile, everything is related in terms of God's plan. And therefore, every narration demonstrates God's actions and his faithfulness through time. Reflections on these events provides lessons for human life in understanding who God is and the nature of our relationship with him. And what do I mean by theology sin historically? The Bible also contains material that is allegorical and serves to explain God's revelation in terms of his role in the lives of people. In that sense, they are true, but not factual. For example, the creation stories that are narrated in the first and the second chapter of Genesis are historical, but lack historicity, in other words, historical authenticity. That is, they tell, of, they tell us of the creator, but not how God created. The book of Exodus explains God's providential care for the chosen race, but to find historicity in it, we would need to take every event that is narrated there and try to correlate it with known secular history. Just as in our everyday conversation, we say the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. In truth, we know the sun never rises or sets. Yet we speak of the rising and setting of the sun to indicate the separation of night and day. Sunrise and sunset are historical or time-linked events but lack objective historicity or historical authenticity because they do not happen historically because the sun never actually sets. It is a word picture. Similarly, the sky is a visual experience of light passing through air of different densities like through a prism. In reality, the sky as a limited material body does not exist. Yet we see the sky as if it were a solid thing. What we see and hear need not exist as we perceive it. And what we do not see or hear did not be unreal. Our perception of events can also be biased. The biblical history interprets what secular history fails to see. Every event that is mentioned in the Bible speaks directly to our hearts. Each one of our lives is unfolded in the biblical history. Let us put it in a simple way. The Bible as a word of God and self-revelation of God teaches us about God, his intervention in human history, what God wants from us and how we can remain faithful to God. The Bible records historical events, but not in the manner of a history textbook. The accuracy of God's revelation of himself to us is what is important. How to live our lives in love and obedience to God is more important than recording exact dates, especially since different peoples recorded history from different significant events. That is, the number of years in the reign of a certain king, for example. So, the Pentateuch speaks of the creation, the 
fall of human race, the establishment of a dedicated people, a covenant, a law to be obeyed, and God's guidance through the wilderness to the promised land. In a sense, the life of each human being reflects and imitates the story told in the five books of Moses. Here are five topics that can highlight in the Pentateuch. First, God is the creator of the universe. He created it out of his goodness. Everything that he created is good. Second, God took the utmost care in creating human beings. He did not create them as he created the rest of his creation. He created them in his own image and likeness. Third, sin came into the world because of the disobedience of Adam and Eve. Fourth, God never abandoned his people. When human persons sin, God punished them, but he also promised that the serpent that represented Satan will be defeated. Let a God chose Abraham and through God's covenant, he promised that he will always govern his people. Fifth, through the Exodus event, God showed his mighty power and steadfast love. He formed and chose Moses to be the leader through whom he gave his law and established a covenant. In our study of the Bible, through this YouTube channel, we will reflect on how the Pentateuch is directly connected to the rest of the Bible and especially to the New Testament. St. Augustine puts it beautifully, God, the inspirer and the author of both Testaments, wisely arranged that the New Testament be hidden in the world and the world be made manifest in the New. In the next session, we will reflect on the first book of the Pentateuch, that is the book of Genesis. My dear friends, to receive our study on the Bible, please subscribe our channel. Before I end this presentation, I request you to read the Bible every day. Let his word be a lamb for my path.